Station, Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, we are ready for the event. Houston ACR, this is Houston Mission Control. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Houston ACR. How do you hear me? I have you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the space station. Hello to astronauts aboard the International Space Station and to after school students everywhere. I'm Ridgeway White of the Mott Foundation. Through Million Girls Moonshot and the Mizzen by Mott app, we're working to help you explore new worlds. And today, thanks to NASA, you're about to share an experience that's out of this world. Now, let's go to our first question for astronauts Shannon Walker and Kate Rubens. Hi, my name is Darian Scott, and I attend Cardinal Ritter College Preparatory High School, and I'm representative of Girls Tech Incorporated of St. Louis. My question for you today is, as we move into the new year, what are some new things we should expect from NASA? Oh my, there is so much going on at NASA, you wouldn't even believe it. Let's first start with the Artemis program. That's our program where we're going to take people back to the moon. We expect to have our first uncrewed test launch this year, followed soon by people going to the moon. Then we've got the space station where Kate and I are now. Um, there is a ton of science going on here. It's unbelievable. Soon, in a couple of months, if you can believe that, we're going to have crew too. We're going to have another crew coming up here. We actually have a new airlock on the space station where we can take science samples in and out. That's going to be great. That's just the human spaceflight side. We've got all our unmanned stuff going on in the solar system as well. Uh, we've got our mo rovers on Mars. We've got satellites around Mars. We've got satellites around planets. And it, even, did you know that we have satellites that we launched when we were young that are outside the solar system and we are still talking to them? <laughs> there is so much going on at NASA. It's unbelievable. Hi, my name is Nina DeLuna and I attend Thomas Fleming School in Vermont. My question is, what kind of research do you do on the ISS? Hey, that's a great question. I just came to this activity actually from doing a whole bunch of research. We were looking at bacteria and how they grow in space. So this is super interesting. Uh, of course, we've got a lot of bacteria on Earth. Some are good, some are bad, but they're everywhere. They're part of our environment. And so if you have people up here, you're going to have bacteria too. And we're really interested in what happens to bacteria on the surface of the space station. So this is one of the things that I've been looking at actually for the last few hours today. We also have a lot of research on things like what happens to human bodies in space. And uh, I'm doing a really big experiment right now that's looking at cardiomyocytes. That's a big word, but that actually means just the makeup of your heart tissue. So how do human heart cells actually beat in space? We're going to send all of this science back to you guys, back to the planet pretty soon. And we're really looking forward to hearing about all of these results from the International Space Station. Hi, my name is Ria, and I'm from Texas. My question is, how far is the space station from the sun? Leah, that's a great question, and I'm from Texas too. Well, you know, the sun is about 93 million miles from the Earth, give or take. The space station is only about 300 miles from, this, from the Earth, give or take. So the space station is still about 93 million miles from the sun. Hi, my name is Estrella, and I attend at Riley School in Wisconsin. My question is, how long do you train for your first mission? Hi, Treya. It's nice to talk to you. So we've got training in a couple parts. The first one is after we get selected to be astronauts, we do some basic training, and that takes about two years. And then when we get selected for our mission, we do another two to two and a half years of training. And this is actually training all over the world. So uh, we have international partner agencies. This is the International Space Station. And so we train in places like Japan and Russia and Canada and Europe. Europe, in addition to our training at Johnson Space Center in Texas. 
Hi, my name is Natalie Gerlach and I am from Nebraska. My question is, what is it like with no gravity in space? Natalie, that's an excellent question. No gravity is very interesting. Of course, we're floating all the time. And so in space, you don't actually have chairs. We can just sit where we want to. Another thing we can do is if we feel like it, we can pretend to be superheroes and just fly around. But the real fun thing is if you feel like it, you can spend time on the ceiling. Hi, my name is Alex and I'm from Texas. My question is, how does a gyroscopic stabilizer work in your space station? Hey, that's a great question. And this involves a lot of physics because obviously we have to control our momentum on the space station. Uh, so we have things called CMGs and these are giant gyroscopes. I mean, they're really big. They're bigger than like a, both of us put together. Uh, we have four of them and they're located on the outside of the space station. And these CMGs can actually spin up and the gyroscope helps offset the momentum that we build up on the space station. At some point, they become what's called saturated, which means that they've taken all the spin up that they possibly can. And you can probably go work out some math problems to figure this out. Right. What we do in that case to offset our momentum is actually fire some thrusters. And those are located down on the aft, on the back end of the segment. Uh, the whole space station on the Russian segment. And this allows us to offset those that momentum. We can reset our gyroscopes and then we can start uh, controlling our attitude again. Great question. Hi, my name is Tegan and I'm from Nebraska. And I want to know about your application process to be on the ISS or to work at NASA. Yeah, great question, and we always need people to w come work at NASA or be astronauts. Um, it's actually, the application process starts off pretty simple. There's a, there's a form you have to fill out. It's probably online these days. You just fill it out. Uh, to be an astronaut, we don't select crews very often. We select people about once every four years or so. So when you hear a call that, astro uh, that NASA is selecting astronauts, you need to get your application in, and it's the same form. After that, NASA reviews them, and then we go out and pick the people that we want to interview, and that's where the real fun starts. It is a very long process. We actually interview people twice before they get selected to be an astronaut. Hi, my name's Esme. Um, I'm from Maryland, and uh, my question is, how long on the daily do you spend outside fixing the spacecraft? Hey, that's a great question. We do go outside to fix the spacecraft. Uh, that's called a spacewalk or an EVA. EVA stands for extra vehicular activity. It sounds kind of funny, but vehicular, this is a vehicle. Extra, we're outside of it, and activity is whatever we need to do to fix the space station. Uh, we don't do this on a daily basis. We actually only, it's a big deal to plan a spacewalk. And so we do this, uh, we wait and we kind of collect everything that needs fixing and we put it all on one day, or we can go out and fix something if it's really urgent. And that's called a contingency EVA. Uh, we do these, we're gonna do four coming up. And so you'll see those uh, pretty soon at the end of January and early February. And those are even on NASA TV. So if you wanna watch us outside, fixing things in space, you can do that. You can do that. You can watch us fix things on the outside of space station. And the whole EVA itself, the spacewalk itself, usually takes about six and a half hours. And that's when we're just outside the space station in vacuum. Um, but to prepare for the EVA and then to come back inside, it's a long day. It's about 12 hours total. Uh, and, and about 10 or 11 of those uh, were in the spacesuit. So, it's a pretty big day. It's a big day on station when we do a spacewalk. Hi, my name is Kayla Ikawa. I live in Illinois. And my question is today, what type of exercises do you do in order to keep your body in shape? Thank you. 
Thanks for that question. Um, you're right. We have to do exercise to keep our bodies in shape up here. In fact, we do exercise. We're scheduled for two and a half hours every day, which seems like a lot, and it is, but it's so important to keep your muscles and your bones strong. We have three primary ways of doing exercise. We have an exercise bike that we ride, and the interesting thing in space, you don't need a seat. You just have your feet clipped to the pedals and you can ride. Um, we have a treadmill that gives us cardiovascular training as well. On a treadmill, you actually have to wear a harness that'll hold you down to the treadmill, otherwise you'll just float off of it. And then we've got this great machine, this kind of magical. <laughs> it's like lifting weights. Of course, you can't really lift weights in space because everything doesn't really, you know, there's, no weight. there's no weight up here. <laughs> but you push against resistance and that's how you really keep your muscles strong. So three ways to do exercise in space. Hi, my name is Tabitha and I'm from Boston, Massachusetts. My question is, what inspired you to go to space and what was your biggest challenge while training? Hey, Tabitha, I'm not from Boston, but I lived there for three years. I was working at MIT running a lab, so hello to Boston. And that's a great question. Uh, when I was a little kid, when I was maybe five years old, um, since I can remember, I've always wanted to go to space. And so when people ask me, hey, what do you want to do when you grow up? When I was five, I said, I want to be an astronaut. And sounds like the same story for Shannon. Uh, so I've always been inspired. Uh, we had some very cool things as part of our, actually our county education, continuing education, had some things like sky watching parties. So we would take giant telescopes out in California and we would actually get to see the stars and constellations. They would have a professional astronomer there and they would show us the planets. And I remember being five or six, this was just incredibly inspiring. In terms of the biggest challenge, it's a little bit difficult when we're in training and we have to learn so many things and we have to remember so many things. So we have about two and a half years of training. And one of the things that we do up here is we really do all kinds of jobs. So you have to be the plumber and the electrician, doctor. the doctor, sometimes the dentist, the scientist, the spacewalker. Yep a lot of other things that we're probably forgetting. So we get training for all of this, and you have to remember all this training through two and a half years, uh, keep it all straight, and really be able to do everything perfectly the first time that you do it in space. I think that's our biggest challenge. Hi, my name is Allie. I live in Texas. What is the most interesting thing that you have seen outside of your window? You know, there are so many interesting things to see outside the window. It's really hard to choose one. Just last night, we were flying through some aurora. That's really cool to see from space. Um, the Milky Way, when we're in the, uh, on the night side, um, to see the stars and the Milky Way is absolutely unbelievable. Looking down at Earth, the lightning that you can see across the planet is really quite stunning too. Um, so, I don't know. There's hard to choose. My name is Bora Lutemba, and I attend Carter Park Elementary School in Fort Worth, Texas. And my question is, do your food taste the same in space as at home? Hey, that's a great question. Um, so our food up here, a lot of it is uh, dehydrated food. It's really hard to launch things from Earth. It costs a lot of money, so we want to save space. So we take all of the water out of our food on Earth and dehydrate it, and then we rehydrate it up here. So that makes it taste a little bit different. It's, it's mostly the same. One of the really interesting things about space, though, is that you lose your sense of smell a little bit. So we're kind of a little bit stuffed up up here. We've got a, what's called fluid shift, where all the fluid in our legs that's normally from gravity ends up kind of floating up to our head. And so it's not bad, but it does make you feel like you have a little bit of a stuffy nose. And then your sense of smell, of course, affects your sense of taste. So one thing that's pretty universal is even if you don't like hot sauce on the ground, you're from Texas, so you might like hot sauce. You definitely like hot sauce in space. We put it on all of our food. Hi, my name is Natalie. I'm from Vermont, and my question is, what are some of the types of jobs you perform on the ISS? For example, do you maintain controls, the computers, or the electrical systems? 
That is great because yes to all of that. Um, we do just about everything on the space station. And that's why we're trained to do anything on the space station. Each day we wake up in the morning and the control centers around the ground have uplinked our schedule for the day. And it could be doing science, it could be doing uh, maintenance on the space station, could even be doing a spacewalk. You know, you just never know, but guaranteed you'll be doing all of it while you're up here. Hi, my name is Amelia and I'm from Maryland. My question is, are there any games or activities that you do or play in your free time in space? Hey, Amelia, it's nice to talk to you. I spent some time in Maryland. I worked in Frederick for a little while. So hello to Maryland, everybody watching there. And yes, uh, we don't have a lot of free time in space. We're pretty busy with work. Um, but one thing that we've been trying, and this was actually uh, one of my crewmates' ideas, is since we can float up here, could we try floating in from all the different modules and take a video of this? So we go one from the right, one from the left, one from the ceiling, one from the ground. We thought we would be like the Blue Angels. If you've ever seen the Blue Angels, they fly in formation and they look really good. Um, we were not like the Blue Angels. <laughs> We crashed a few times. It was okay, nobody got hurt. We need to practice more. I think the Blue Angels practice a lot. So this was, a, it was a pretty fun activity, uh, trying to fly in formation from, from different directions and, and practice some highly aerobatic flight maneuvers. Hi, my name is Gabrielle and I attend Bradley School in Wisconsin. My question is, do you need to know other languages to be an astronaut? Oh, Gabrielle, do we need to know uh, different languages? Absolutely. This is the International Space Station. So a lot of times we just speak English up here. Uh, certainly amongst the Americans, we'll tend to speak English. But we've got people from all around the world. Uh, we've got a Japanese astronaut with us up here right now, and we've got uh, two Russians as part of our crew as well. So we speak Russian. Kate actually launched on a Russian uh, spacecraft, and so she had to learn the Russian language. I've had to learn the Russian language, so all the astronauts these days learn Russian. We know English. We know some Japanese. Um, it just depends, but yes, you absolutely have to know foreign languages. Shannon's being humble, but she speaks several other languages. German? German, what else? Uh, let's just stop with German. She speaks a lot of languages. <laughs> all right, sorry, next question. Hi, my name is Amber Scott from Illinois. And my question is, how long does it take to get to space? And what does it feel like with no gravity to pull you down? Hey, that is a great question. So how long does it get to space? Shannon told you about the fact that we're about 300 miles from the planet more or less 250 some days. Um, so that's not actually that long in terms of miles given how fast we launch. So by the time we're at our top orbital speed, that's 17,500 miles an hour. And so it actually only takes eight or nine minutes to get from planet Earth to our first orbit. But once we're in orbit, we're not necessarily in the same orbit as the space station. So it does take a little bit longer. We do a series of burns. And every time you do burns, you actually have to do two. And you can go talk about this with your math teacher, why you have to do two. But we always need to do two burns. And we slowly adjust our orbit until we can finally rendezvous and dock with the space station. So that's dependent on each different kind of spacecraft. So for me, it was actually a super quick trip. We got to orbit very, very quickly. The first time I was up here, it took us two and a half days to get to the space station. Then the normal became like about six hours of four orbit rendezvous. And then this was a very quick two orbit rendezvous. So we launched and the next thing I knew, I was in space docked to the space station. Hi, I'm Anaide, a National After School Alliance Youth Ambassador from Miami, Florida. On behalf of Million Girls Moonshot and After School Youth everywhere, thank you for today's exploration into space. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. 
Thank you to all, all participants. Station, we are now resuming operational audio comm.